Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International news update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Lindsay Millen. From the north to the south, teachers are on the march defending education from privatization and corporate interests. 26,000 Chicago teachers are on strike this week for the first time in 25 years. Chicago has the third biggest school system in the US and uh, you've been following this, Lindsay, so tell us more about it. Yeah, um, teachers say that education has been undermined by a new system which focuses entirely on test scores and disciplines teachers as students don't perform well. They say that this approach, is, this approach ignores other factors such as growing class sizes, poverty and a shortage of school books and that teaching students to pass tests is not good education. Teachers have said it's shocking to have a democratic mayor who is anti-union and that Mayor Emanuel has treated them with disrespect, reneging on a promise to raise salaries. The strike is significant because it pits the mayor, Rahm Emanuel, against the teachers' union. Emanuel is President Obama's former chief of staff and teachers have traditionally been strong supporters of the Democratic Party. And in an election year, where Obama is struggling to mobilise his base. The struggle has wider consequences. There's concern that confrontation, confrontation will sour the relationship between the Democratic Party and the Labour unions. And while Obama is expected to win in Chicago, union anger may spill into neighbouring Midwestern states such as Wisconsin, Michigan and Ohio, where Obama's race with Romney is much tighter. Um, I would urge caution to the, any of those who think Romney will stand with the Labour movement on any issue. Um, it's not just Chicago that's experiencing the problem. 300,000 education workers have lost their jobs since 2009 and teachers across the country complain about a lack of respect for the profession as they are often attacked for poor standards in schools. Typically politicians, whether donkey or elephant, condemn teachers for putting their interests above those of the children they teach, which is a lazy slur always used against striking teachers. And even Hollywood with films like Won't Back Down has joined in on the attack. Teachers, however, say, no, it's not just about us, it's about the children too. Mayor Emanuel is only too happy to send his kids to private school and teachers say that all children deserve this high standard of education. Many teachers also fear that corporate interests wanting to use software to teach classes are behind the attacks. Teachers in Australia are on strike too. Let's hear from our correspondent down under, Cindy O'Connor. Um, our teachers dispute in the state of Victoria has been phenomenal. Uh, basically we had an election last year and a Conservative government uh, made a promise that teachers in Victoria would be the highest paid in Australia if uh, all the teachers voted Conservative. Hmm. So the Conservative Premier Ted Bailu is now being called Ted Failu <laughs> because <laughs> he's become Premier and now said that that was more of a goal than a promise and it might wow. take a really long time to get there. Right. So uh, he's picked the wrong workers to pick on. Um, teachers in I don't know what it's like in Glasgow, but in Melbourne, teachers are pretty radical, very committed, and the phrase is, you can't put students first if you put teachers last. That's a good one. Um, yeah, they're campaigning not just for themselves, but for the kids, for the community, for everyone. So there's a heap of community support. But the most interesting thing for us is um, it's been the biggest rally. Mm -hmm. The teachers are really upset. You know, teachers don't like it when people lie. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've sent you some footage of just like entire city streets full of teachers in red t-shirts and some of the other footage is of teachers in purple mm -hmm. and those teachers are in the independent and religious schools and for many years didn't have any union and now they do and even though they're not bargaining they took unprotected industrial action so they could be fined and jailed and everything but they turned out in their thousands to support their comrades in public education. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I don't think you saw that coming. And there's a great image um, of Mary Blewett, who's the Secretary of the Public Teachers, and Deb James, who's the Secretary of the Independent Schools Teachers Union, mm -hmm. and the two of them coming together in a street corner and just hugging each other because 
for many years, that people considered those two unions to be rivals because the money is spent in community and independent religious education. For some people's point of view, should be spent only in public education. So instead of being rivals, they've gone, yeah, look, we have different politics, mm. but all of us can't stand it when the Premier lies. Yeah. So we're going to support each other. And if you'd said 10 years ago that the teachers in the private schools, independent religious schools, would take action, people would have thought you were just an hysterical communist or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they did in their thousands. Well, that's so fantastic news. And um, Grocon, we've seen lots of dramatic footage um, online of the, the Grocon dispute. Can you tell us what that's mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Um, with the construction union in Melbourne, They've always been uh, very, very good at campaigning mm -hmm. and pursuing claims. And in the past, Grocon, they were two brothers who came to Australia, Bruno and Enzo, and they were okay. Like, construction game is pretty tough, so bargaining and campaigning would be full on, but they'd sort it out on the job site. The new generation is led by um, Bruno's son, Daniel, and Daniel is sort of, I don't know... <laughs> He's going through legal avenues and all of that. He wants to have a say in who are the um, shop stewards right. and who are the safety regs on the site. The construction workers are in an industry where people die, yeah. where when people are injured, they're disfigured, dismembered, disabled, like serious injuries. So the current Secretary of the Australian Council of Trade Unions, Dave Oliver, he used to be Secretary of my union, Australian Manufacturing Workers Union. Mm -hmm. When he was in the construction industry as a metal worker, he was elected as a health and safety rep. And it's, it's seen as a way, you get elected as a health and safety rep, then you get elected as a shop steward, you get involved in the committees, and then, you know, you might be like Dave and become Secretary of all the unions in Australia, I don't know. But... <laughs> But Daniel has decided that um, he pays the wages and uh, he will infiltrate those elections and rig them. and So that's the dispute. But, okay. yeah, look, he, he was backed by um, that horrible lying premier, Ted Bayou. He was backed by the police. Um, clearly the, the conservatives and the employer groups got involved. There was just so much money being spent on a battle that essentially the employer can't win. Yeah. You don't, as an employer, get to choose. But, yeah. you know, he went for the fight anyway. Went. Predictable tactics for mm. union busting. So our comrades around the world will be saying, yeah, we've seen all this before somewhere else. It's just unusual that they try it with such a highly organised union that supported, like, our unions involved, the ETU, which is our union for Sparkies, for electricians. All the trades are involved in this because we go in and out of those construction jobs depending mm -hmm. on which stage of construction you're at. Yeah. Uh, so the, the battle isn't for who can be the CFMU, the construction union, mm -hmm. shop steward at Grocon. The battle is about workers having the right to elect mm -hmm. our own shop stewards and our own health and safety reps, and particularly in an industry where... Injury and death are unfortunately quite common. Yeah. And you can imagine some families in Melbourne, you know, um, one of the parents is a teacher, one of the parents is in construction. So the mm. next generation of uh, radical kids is getting a good education <laughs> through all this stuff. Thank you, Cindy. And that Grocon dispute sounds nasty. Apparently, the company has used Hell's Angels to intimidate strikers. So Good luck to all those workers fighting for the right to uh, elect their own union reps. Now, in the UK, the TUC is holding its an annual congress in Brighton this week. Delegates at the TUC, which represents most unions in the UK, have backed coordinated strike action by millions of public and private sector workers fighting government attacks on pay and services. They reject the government's failed austerity program, which has caused a double dip recession, a stagnant economy and plummeting living standards while also seeing public debt rise. Delegates vowed full support to all public and private sector workers taking industrial action against cuts or attacks on pay, jobs, pensions or conditions and to coordinate unions in taking strike action. Unions will be building for a massive march on the 20th of October for a future that works. Teachers again! Earlier this year, teachers in Tanzania struck for a 100% wage increase. They eventually won 14, 
that South Africa, Southern Africa has seen a wave of industrial unrest. They have been running battles in Malawi as Blantyre city council workers demand a 150% wage increase, with similar demands across the subcontinent. Behind the rising industrial action across the world is the rising cost of living, with the cost of basic foodstuffs soaring. This is due to devastating droughts in the US as well as Russia, as well as speculation on the financial markets. Barclays Bank made $529 million by betting on the food crisis. As climate change makes crop production less predictable, we are likely to see more speculation and rising prices, which we expect will result in more and more upheaval. In poorer countries, workers spend a much higher proportion of their income on food, so when food prices rise, it becomes impossible to live on existing salaries. Indeed, the rising cost of living was one of the primary motivators for the Arab Spring, as workers in North Africa and the Middle East found their wages were no longer enough to live on. Yes, and in South Africa, the unrest in the platinum belt that led to the massacre of miners at Maracana has spread to other sections of the mining industry. This week saw 12,500 workers at the Goldfields Three Fontaine complex embark on wildcat action in which four miners were shot. There have also been protests at a number of other mines, where most workers at Maracana have failed to report for work. Mining is still the backbone of the South African economy and the industrial unrest has hit the sector hard. There's been a huge number of really interesting stories on this in the news mm -hmm. which call into question um, even further the police action um, and a lot, of, a lot of interesting evidence that's coming to light through photographic journalism particularly so I'd urge you to seek that out if you can. Mm -hmm. Thanks Lindsay. Uh, finally, UFOs last week grounded Lufthansa flights across Germany the Flight Attendants Union in Germany is called UFO and it went on strike last week, grounding flights across the country. And uh, also we would like to urge you to affiliate your union to Union Solidarity International, your union or your union branch. Uh, it costs a nominal fee if you're based in the UK and Ireland and anywhere else in the world, it's free. Thank you once again and goodbye.